precious and holy name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Have you ever been made anxious by a text message? <laughs> Today or yesterday or ever? Have Oh, this is good. I'm I'm about to tell on myself. I <laughs> I used to be in a season where if you ended your text message with a period, I thought you were mad at me. Is that a millennial thing or a Gen Z thing? I don't know. Has anybody ever felt that way? Like if you get a text message back that has period, I see some millennials shaking their heads yes. If you get a text message back with just a period or you get a paragraph back and there's no exclamation points, you just assume that the person's mad at you. That's some, I know, I know it's a generational thing. What'd you say, David? I know people are mad in all their text messages. I used to, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't think that anymore. The Lord has delivered me, but I used to would get so anxious at text messages that ended with periods. And that's just the simple way. That's a simple um, um, example of how the enemy can twist things <laughs> in our minds. He is a master manipulator, and he's a master twister of the truth. And look at somebody this morning and say, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Turn to your neighbor. I'm going to need you to be a little bit more talkative and say, don't get it twisted. There we go. There we go. If you're online this morning, type it in the chat. Don't get it twisted. This morning, we're talking about how the enemy loves to twist God's truth. Turn with me. If you would, to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. We're looking this morning at the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. You might know this story or know of it. But we're in Matthew chapter 4, and I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. If you want to follow along with that version in your app, NASB. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 11 this morning. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1. Through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. And the tempter came to him and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. How many of y'all know Jesus was real hungry after fasting for 40 days? If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written. He's coming back at him with God's word. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And Satan said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, go, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and began to minister to him. We are in this series called A Beautiful Mind, Taking Back Your Mind in the Age of Anxiety. And have you ever noticed when anxiety really attacks? It attacks when you're hungry. It attacks when your body is hungry. It attacks when your soul is hungry. It attacks when your mind is hungry. It attacks when you're exhausted. It attacks when you're empty. Here, Jesus was led up to the wilderness by the Spirit. And Jesus had fasted for 40 days 
to prepare himself for the battle that was coming. The enemy attacked Jesus when he was at his weakest, and the enemy attacks us when we're at our weakest. When we're tired, when we're hungry, when we don't have anything left to give, that's when the enemy attacks. The Spirit, the Bible says, led Jesus up to a place in the wilderness, a place of isolation, a place of aloneness. The enemy attacked Jesus when he was alone. The enemy attacked Jesus when he was isolated. Now the Spirit led Jesus to that place to prepare him for what was coming. To say, hey, I want you to, um, I want you to fast for 40 days in preparation for the battle that you have to face. But The enemy knew that when Jesus was alone, when Jesus was hungry, when Jesus was tired, when he was at his very worst, that was the moment he needed to attack. And that's the very moment when the enemy will attack you with anxiety, with depression, with mental illness, is when you're alone, when you're tired, when you're hungry, when you're isolated. But the Spirit... The Spirit had other plans for Jesus' alone time. See, Jesus wasn't really alone. He was with the Spirit, the Spirit of his Father. Jesus was in the wilderness spending alone time with God's Spirit, preparing his body, preparing his mind, preparing his Spirit, for what was about to come in the temptation. I wonder, do you have enough alone time with the Spirit? That when the enemy would come to spiral you into anxiety, that when the enemy would come to take you down to the deepest, darkest places of depression, have you been alone with God's Spirit so that you can withstand the temptation? Man, we live in a world where we barely get any alone time. We live in a world where we are taxi drivers for our kids. (laughs) We are Uber drivers. We drive them from one thing to another thing to another thing. Maybe we work a lot, and we're just constantly working. Maybe we don't have a family and we're single, but man, we love to be with our friends. We love to be on our phones because we can't stand the silence and it feels like it's an alone place. And so we try to not be alone even when we are alone. How often do you get alone with the Spirit? It's in those places that His Spirit will provide for you a way out from the temptation of anxiety, from the temptation of depression, from the temptation of fill in the blank. Sometimes I recognize that my life is so busy doing the things of God, doing things that he's called me to do, that the only time I get to talk with him is while I'm taking a drive to one, from one place to another going to do what he's called me to do, or maybe it's in the shower and I have five to ten minutes, maybe like 20 minutes, to, <laughs> to talk to the Lord about what he's doing in my life, how he wants to prepare me for the temptation that may be coming, the temptation to spiral into anxiety. Where can you get those moments alone with God's spirit? Just take a moment. Can you strategize throughout your day, where are those moments for you? Maybe it's not feasible for you to take an hour at the beginning of your day or an hour at the end of your day or an hour-long lunch break to spend time with the Holy Spirit. But where are those little chunks during your day that you could say, okay, Jesus, this is your time. I'm going to put my phone down. It's hard for us to do even in church. It's hard for us to put our phones down even in church. We're constantly worried 
about who might need us or what's going on in the world? Where are the chunks of your time where you can carve out maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes to say, Jesus, this is your time. Speak now. Your servant is listening. We talked during our Genesis series about conversations with the enemy. And if you've been around here very long at all, you'll know that I often talk about Jesus being the bouncer of our mind. Jesus just being the bouncer at the front gate of our mind saying, no, that thought can't come in. No, that thought has to stay out. I'm not going to let that thought come into my mind because it's going to take me into a spiral of anxiety or a spiral of depression. Did you notice in this passage, Jesus entered into a conversation with the enemy? And I was like, oh, shoot, have I been preaching this wrong? (laughs) See, Eve got in trouble. We talked about Eve in our Genesis series. She got in trouble by entering into a conversation with the enemy. He said, did God really say that you couldn't eat of that fruit from that tree? And Eve tried. You know, she was like, yeah. He said we couldn't eat from that. And the enemy twisted God's words and said, no, no, no. You, (laughs) he's telling you you can't eat from that fruit of that tree because he doesn't want you to become like him and because Eve entered into that conversation she spiraled into temptation she spiraled into sin and so Jesus here the only sinless person to ever exist enters into a conversation with the enemy but did you notice he didn't use his words he didn't use his opinion (laughs) He didn't use his own thought process of how things should go. He used the word of God. The only word that is eternal. The only word that has power. The only word that is perfect and inspired and can last throughout generations. Jesus used this word to fight off the enemy. Jesus taught us how to converse with the enemy. I still stand by the whole Jesus being the bouncer of our mind thing. I stand by it. Because some of us aren't in a place where we can converse with the enemy. Some of us are in a place where we just got to shut it down before it even begins. We've got to say, nope, mm -mm." she answered my text message with a period, but nope, I'm not going there. I ain't going there, Satan, not today. Not today, Satan. I'm going to get that shirt. (laughs) Not today, period. (laughs) We move on. We move on. And so (laughs) we move on. Jesus said, not today, Satan. I'm going to use your own words against you. I'm going to use God's words against you, rather. But Satan, he's the master manipulator. So maybe you're not strong enough to answer Satan with God's word. And if you're not, I encourage you to just say, Jesus, be the bouncer of my mind. Get him out of here. I'm not even going to enter into that conversation. I'm not strong enough yet, Jesus. Help me to just take back my mind right now in this instant. See, Satan is the master manipulator. He is an enemy that is all about ifs. He's all about ifs. If you are the son of God. Command these stones become bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down off of this mountain and command your angels to rescue you. He is a master manipulator. He is all about ifs. He was attacking Jesus' very identity as a son of God. He does that to us all the time. He will attack your identity as a son or daughter of God before anything else. If you are really a daughter of God, you shouldn't be struggling with that. If you really are a son of God, you shouldn't be depressed. Strap up your boots. What's that saying? Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Thank you, David. That's what I was trying to get at. He is, 
he attacks our identity. He attacks with ifs. He tried to get Jesus to prove himself. If you are the son of God, prove it. Prove to me that you can throw yourself off of this cliff and be saved. Prove that you can turn these stones into bread. If you bow down and worship me, I will give you more than your God has given you. Satan will always try to get us to prove ourselves. Do you feel like you've been proving yourself lately? Do you feel like you've been trying to prove that you're good enough, that you're strong enough, that you're whatever enough, that you're worthy enough? That's Satan trying to take you into a spiral of anxiety that you don't have time for. Satan is a twister of God's words. Look at somebody and say, don't get it twisted. Come on, come on, we need to talk in this place. Don't get it twisted. Satan said, command these stones to become bread if you really are the son of God. He was saying, just pray your problems away, son of God. Just pray and it will go away. We've lived enough life to know that's not really how it works all the time, don't we? We don't know why our mom had to die of cancer. We don't know why we prayed and prayed and prayed until our faces were blue and something tragic still happened to us. We don't know why. But Satan is a twister of God's words. If you really were as close to God as you say you are, that wouldn't have happened. If you would have lived a better life, that wouldn't have happened. They wouldn't have been gone so young. See how he twists God's words? He twists in our minds. Satan said, if you really are the son of God, throw yourself down and pray that the angels will catch you. He was telling Jesus to test God. And Jesus came back to him and said, the word says, actually, do not test the Lord your God. Jesus answered with absolutes where Satan came with ifs. Jesus answered with absolutes, man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That was an absolute. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Jesus said, do not test the Lord your God. That was an absolute. Jesus said, if you just bow down and worship me, I'll give you more than God ever could. And Jesus answered with an absolute, you shall have only one God and none above him. Satan's job is twisting. It's twisting. He tempts us to see things from his point of view. That's what he was doing with Jesus in the wilderness. Satan was twisting God's words. Satan was twisting the situation and tempting Jesus to see things from his point of view, not God's. How many times does Satan try to get us to see things from his point of view. That period in that text message, they must be mad at you. That cutting word that somebody said to you, the whole world must hate you. I'm going to send you into a spiral of depression. One glance that somebody gave you as you passed them in the hall and suddenly you're wondering, if everybody feels against you. One little post on social media and suddenly your life, your God-given life doesn't measure up. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not buff enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not popular enough. I'm not approved enough. I'm not enough. Satan can take one little thing that happens throughout your day and twist it 
and get you to go into a spiral of anxiety, a spiral of depression, a spiral of suicidal thoughts, just one thing. And he twists it. Don't get it twisted. I beg you, don't get it twisted. As the band was worshiping this morning, practicing before y'all got here, they were singing that song, Another in the Fire. And I, the Lord was just ministering to me during that practice time. And I asked the Lord if I could share this because he gave me a vision of it while I was there worshiping in that seat. He gave me a vision while they were singing, and I said, God, can I share that? And I believe he's given me permission to because I've been healed from it. There was a season of my life when I wasn't at this church where I was really struggling with mental illness. I was really struggling with suicidal thoughts. I just couldn't take my life um, I couldn't take the stuff that was going on in my mind. I have OCD really severely. And the thoughts that were racing in my mind and the things that it was doing to my body, I just, I couldn't, I didn't know how to get out of it. The enemy had twisted and twisted and twisted and twisted until I was a ball of mess. And the worship team was singing another in the fire. Y'all know that story? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There was a fourth man in the fire protecting them, not letting them get burned up. And God gave me a vision this morning that when I was at my darkest, curled up in my bed, just praying that my mind would slow down, just praying that I could get through the night, God showed me where Father God was. In that room. He showed me where the Holy Spirit was in that room. He showed me Jesus washing my feet in the middle of that awful time. And I share that today just to say if you're in a ball of anxiety, if you're in a ball of depression, if you're in a ball of suicidal thoughts, you're not alone. The enemy, that's his job, is to twist and twist and twist until you're unrecognizable as a son or daughter of God. His job is to twist and to twist and to twist until you feel like you don't have victory, until you feel like you don't have a way out. What is Satan tempting you to twist in your mind? I think we all have those places. I think that's universal to every person in this room. What is he trying to get you to twist in your mind? I just got a, a thought. Maybe he's trying to get you to twist in your mind that that coworker you work with would make a better spouse than your current one. He will twist things, and he will tell you that it's God. God's telling me to leave my spouse. God's telling me to go over here, do this thing. He will twist it and twist it, and twist it. What is Satan tempting you to twist in your mind? And how can you fight it with Jesus's absolute truth? We've got this great thing nowadays called Google. <laughs> and I just encourage you, if Satan's trying to get you to spiral into anxiety or depression or suicide or comparison or unworthiness, there's this thing called Google Well, you just say, uh, scripture on depression. <laughs> scripture on anxiety. Scripture on unworthiness. Scripture on comparison. And you just Google it, girl, boy. <laughs> you just Google it. It's amazing. And you can begin to fight in your mind with Jesus' absolute truth, God's very words. That's how you fight your battles. Last week, we talked about how God's promise, how God's peace is a promise that he will keep in our lives. I just want to remind you of that today. God keeps his promises. He promised us peace 
and he will keep it for us. So my assignment for you this week is to get into God's presence, get with his Holy Spirit. And whatever thoughts Satan has tried to twist in your mind, I, I encourage you, I implore you to get in God's presence and say, Spirit, untwist my mind. Spirit, untwist my thoughts. Help me see things from your perspective, Jesus. I've seen things from the enemy's perspective for far too long. Take me higher. Take me above the clouds where I can look down like a bird looks down on the ground and I can actually see what's going on. I don't want to be deceived anymore. I want to see it from your perspective, Jesus. Untwist my thoughts. Jesus, we come to you this morning. I just feel your spirit on the series, God. I just feel your spirit wanting to untwist people's minds and hearts and bodies and spirits. You want to twist us whole, untwist us holistically. I pray for my friends in this room, whether they're battling anxiety or depression or OCD or some mental illness or something that is not related to mental illness, maybe a situation in their life, whatever it is, God, would you give them your perspective this morning? Would you give them your words this morning? Would you give them your power this morning? I pray that you would shore up our identity in you. That we are sons and daughters of God. And if someone is not a son or daughter this morning, I pray that they will seek you out, Jesus, by coming to see me or coming to see someone that they trust in this place. We love you, Jesus. This is all for you, Jesus. This is all for you, Jesus. Come and do now what only you can do, Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. We don't have altars here. <laughs> I'm working on that because I think it's important. But we do have these rugs up front. And if anyone just needs a space to kneel before the Lord, I invite you to come up on these rugs. And if you don't want to be prayed over, you can go to this side, and if you do want to be prayed over, you can come over on this rug and bow. I just invite you this morning, leave it here. Leave it here. Let God untwist your thoughts here. In Jesus' name.
Thank you for honoring the presence of Jesus in this place. Uh, just a little bit of what I believe God is inviting us into is becoming a church that lingers in the presence of God. Becoming a church that responds to God's word and God's spirit and God's um, anointing and God's worship. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because I believe God is doing something here this morning and I believe it's going to continue. And so I just appreciate, I appreciate your sensitivity to the spirit this morning and I appreciate you praying over people that maybe need prayer this morning just as you're worshiping and as you're sitting in your seat. That's the kind of church we want to be as a family when one grieves we grieve and we pray over them in our places and we invite God's spirit to just keep working and so God we place every piece of anxiety before you we place every piece of depression before you we place every twisted thought before you we leave it here on this holy ground we brush it off and we say no more in Jesus name we say no more in Jesus name enough is enough enough is enough enemy you have no place on the children of God this is a holy place, and for years we have prayed that every demonic oppression has to leave and flee. It has no place here, and so we speak to the demonic and say, go in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, a spirit of peace, will cover you. We are whole people in Jesus' name. We are wholehearted believers in Jesus' name. We are sons and daughters of God in Jesus' name. Minds be made whole in the name of Jesus. You have given us authority to speak, God. And so we prophesy, minds be made whole in the name of Jesus. Bodies be made whole in the name of Jesus. Hearts be made whole in the name of Jesus. 
spirits be made whole in the name of Jesus. We take back what hell has stolen here this morning. In the name, the mighty, matchless, priceless, strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I have a really fun announcement to make (laughs) after all of that, which thank you again so much for just being sensitive to God's spirit. But I have a really fun announcement to make. Um, This is Katie Driver, if you didn't know. Yeah. Katie is a full-time teacher in the Selma School District, Selma Elementary, second grade. Uh, But Katie has recently agreed to become our part-time worship pastor. Yeah. And um, we are just so excited. I am so excited for what Katie is bringing and the anointing that she's bringing. Um, I just am so thankful that, you know, we had Megan and Leo here for so long and such an amazing worship culture. And I just feel like we haven't missed a beat uh, since they left. And that's really a testament to what God has on your life and on this worship team's life. I mean, I just am so thankful for this team Um, I'm thankful for the way that they encourage each other, the way that they are here week in and week out playing for the Lord. I mean, they don't want to miss a week. And um, I'm telling you, they give so much in practice time every week and um, at their homes and here on Sunday mornings. They get here before any of us do. And so I'm so grateful for you and for the team you have behind you. And we welcome you to our gathering family officially on staff. You want to say anything? Okay. (laughs) David's going to come and give some announcements. (laughs) Hi, I'm David. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, And hey, before we move on, Stephanie and Katie, hey, it's been an interesting six months or so for our church. And so thank you from all of us for the roles that you've stepped into. Um, So thankful, so thankful. Um, If you are new here, then welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, We hope that you feel uh, a part of this and invited. Uh, Hopefully we will do our part to make you feel that way. If you are ready to take your next steps uh, with the gathering, if you would, whether that's small groups or volunteering or just getting to know us better, If you would text next steps to the number on the back of the seat in front of you, 765-217-0150. If you text next steps, we will get a hold of you uh, to walk through what next steps you want. Oh, Rich does not have the number behind his seat. No? Rich is doing this to me. I don't know what that means. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, I just told you it's 765-217-0150, so there you go. Um, Also, if you are ready to take your next steps with Jesus in becoming a follower of Jesus or in baptism, also, if you would text Jesus to that same number, and we will follow up with you on that, and we would love to walk through that process with you as well. Um, Another exciting thing coming up on July 9th, we have outdoor movie night. So we're, there we go. That was great. Wow. Um, So we're looking forward to that. I hope you can plan to be a part of us for that part, uh, plan to be with us uh, that night. And then finally, just want to continue to thank you for your generosity and giving, allowing us to do the things that we do here in our community and around the world to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. Uh, This month, our ministry partner that we are highlighting is Stripped Love, who is working to bring women out of sex trafficking and into into the freedom of Christ. And so we're so thankful that you're partnering with us in in that and all of the different ministries that, that we're a part of supporting. So glad you're with us today. Have a great day.